What is up everybody, it's I, Ronan, and I want to start this video by uh, apologizing uh, to myself, to any Ice Barrier players that are out there, uh, to any Burn players as well, uh, because this is, uh, I hadn't done Ice Barriers before, and I thought, hey, it's winter, that's coming, why not, and Ice Barriers are like, uh, they're a meme. I enjoy some sick memes. And, uh, yeah. Ice Barrier Burn. Uh, it's not good. But it's also the best way I could find to play pure Ice Barriers. Uh, you could always play, like, Frog Ice Barriers. That's a very good build. Uh, well, not very good, but solid. Uh, but this is... This was the best I could come up with. I hate it. No one really likes it, I don't think. And uh, we're doing this anyway. So, that out of the way, uh, this week we are learning how to play Ice Barrier Burn. And, uh, yeah, so basically the strategy is to stall, then use a bunch of generic burn cards in order to burn your opponent to death. Possibly do a little bit of beatdown if you can stall to a Boral Sword. Uh... In order to accomplish this goal, uh, we built the deck focused around this card, which is uh, surprisingly potent as a stun card, actually. Like, legit, this stops a lot of decks, and I was not expecting to. to. Uh, but it is Spellbreaker of the Ice Barrier. It's a level 4 water monster of 1,200 attack and 2,000 defense. And once per turn, it lets you send an Ice Barrier monster from your hand to the grave. And if you do, spell cards cannot be activated until the end phase of your next turn, as long as this remains face up on the field. Uh, basically what this says is, if you have this and a Ice Barrier in hand, then you can stop your opponent from doing anything with their spell cards. So, say, no spell trap removal, uh, no... I mean, what have you, just like no spells. It's a surprisingly potent card right now. I wasn't expecting it to be. But uh, yeah, basically the idea of the deck is to get to your Spellbreaker and then stall until you get enough burn damage. Uh, in order to help us get to Spellbreaker, we have uh, a few draw and search engines in the form of Strategist of the Ice Barrier, which... Uh, once per turn, lets you send an Ice Barrier monster from your hand to the grave to draw a card. We also have Prior, which special summons itself as long as you control an Ice Barrier. And it has the ability to tribute itself, then target an Ice Barrier monster into the grave, except itself, to special summon it. So that's a very good way to sort of build board presence as well as get some cool moves. Uh, we have Dewdark of the Ice Barrier, a level 2 tuner that can attack directly if all the monsters you control are level 2. Uh, it's uh, mostly here just as fodder for Spellbreaker, but uh, it can be nice to get that damage every now and again. Also, the fact that it helps make totally awesome, pretty nice. Uh, beyond that, we just have different various ways to protect our Spellbreaker. Uh, we have a Defender of the Ice Barrier, which, so long as you control another face of Ice Barrier monster, makes it so that your opponent cannot tar declare attacks if the monster has more or the same attack than this one's defense, so that being 1600. Uh, and we also have Secret Guards of the Ice Barrier, another level 2 Aqua with 100 attack and 1600 defense. And as long as you control this and another Ice Barrier uh, monsters that are ice barriers that you control cannot be targeted by the effects of effects monsters. Uh, so yeah, basically, what we try to do is activate all of our spell trap things first, summon Spellbreaker, uh, discard a monster, hopefully it's a defender or secret guards for her effect. Then, if we have prior, we special summon prior, tribute it, and then get back the monster that we discarded, creating a non-targeting slash attack blocking board, as well as having some stunned spell traps. Uh, so honestly, that's not awful. In order to help with that consistency, we have a few other things, like a Foolish Burial to put Ice Barriers in the graveyard for Prior's effect, a Surface, which lets us revive a level 3 and lower water, well, commonly water-type monsters, 
Uh, so that's another way that we are able to get back our discarded good boys. Uh, we also have Medallion of the Ice Barrier, which is a non-hard once per turn. Just says, uh, add an Ice Barrier monster from your deck to your hand. It's all it does, all it needs to do, and it's wonderful. Uh, beyond that, though, uh, as far as our protection effects goes, uh, we have Aquarian Stage, which makes it so that water monsters cannot be destroyed in battle by non-water monsters. And when it's sent from the field to the grave, uh, you are able to target a aqua monster that is in your graveyard, add it back to your hand. So that's just a little bit more recovery. Uh, usually we get back prior, though, so we can keep reviving stuff. Uh, so all of this is honestly not bad, and it makes the deck very good at building some board presence and stalling. Uh, the obvious issue being the negation of Spellbreaker. Uh, however, as far as our win con, I did say this was Ice Barrier Burn after all. Uh, we have a few generic burn cards that we run. Uh, first, we have Trap Trick. Uh, obviously, you all know what that does. Banish a normal trap from the deck to set that trap to the field. However, you cannot activate any more traps except for one for the rest of that turn. Uh, we have three copies of Secret Barrel, which burns your opponent for 200 for every card they currently have that's not in the graveyard or banished zone. Uh, Just Desserts, which burns your opponent for 500 for every monster they control. And Wave Motion Cannon, which gets counters for each standby phase is on the field, and then during a main phase, you can destroy it in order to burn your opponent 1,000 for each of those counters. Uh, so yeah, like I said, the main goal of the deck is simply to stall as best you can, and then uh, build up burn damage till eventually you can burn. Uh, the extra deck isn't anything extraordinary. It is mostly here, just so we have a bit of a uh, some more options. Uh, it's designed a little bit for Pot of Extravagance, which I did run briefly with this deck. Uh, and I'm not really having too much space for it, unfortunately, but, you know, that's uh, how it is, I guess. But, uh, yeah, we're running free, totally awesome, which uh, requires two level two monsters, 2200 attack, zero defense, aqua exes. And once returned in the standby phase, it lets you attach a material from itself to summon a frog monster from the deck. However, we are not running frog monsters, so it doesn't matter. But we are looking at its negation effect. It is a Omni negate. And steal the card as well. So set it to your field if it's a monster effect. Set it to spell trap zone if it's a spell trap. And uh, all you have to do is tribute an aqua monster. This also floats, letting you put a aqua monster back into your deck when it is sent to the graveyard. Uh, so yeah, it's a really good card. It's generally pretty easy to make, uh, given how many level 2s plus prior we have. So yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, we have free Boral Sword. Boral Sword OTKs, as you all well know, because, uh, yeah, it's just OTKs. It's here in case we can get to it. Uh, we have two copies each of the Nightmare Package uh, for the little extra removal. Oh, wait, I accidentally hit away a Cerberus. My bad, one second. Uh, Nightmare Cerberus. There we go. That's better. Uh, we also have free Mistar Boy because uh, we are playing primarily water monsters, so having the ability to make them a little bigger is pretty nice. Now for the side deck, uh, it's actually a little bit more unique this time. Uh, first, though, let's go over the sickest ice barrier tech I think in existence, Torrential Reborn. So, Torrential Reborn says that when a face-up water monster you control is destroyed by battle or by card effect and sent to the grave, you can special summon the monsters destroyed and sent from the field to the graveyard all at the same time, and then burn your opponent 500 for each monster as a hard once per turn. Uh, so it's a very cool card if your opponent's playing a lot of board wipes. They are less common now, admittedly, but it's still really cool, and it's another way to maintain board presence. Uh... I experimented with it some, and I think it was best used as a sideboard card, but all of you might find some other uses for it. Uh, now we have the other very cool Ice Barrier, Warlock of the Ice Barrier. Uh, it says that while you control another face-up Ice Barrier monster, both players must set spells before activating them and cannot activate them until their next turn. Uh, so yeah, basically... 
it is and it's an anti spell fragrance if you have multiple ice barrier monsters so uh very cool in the pendulum matchup actually and uh combos quite nicely with stuff like uh prior and blit prior and uh secret guards and defender and all those other good boys uh now we have our generic pieces uh we have free gamma still because it is a kaiju and it is water so we can make use of it free call by the grave in case of hand traps and free twin twister in case of spell trap removal uh so yeah that all being said if you're new here we just uh go over a couple replays i show you what the deck does how it kind of operates uh its problems its strengths so on and so forth but uh yeah all that being said i will see you guys in the first replay all right everyone one of the first replay with jinmi we are steamed because steam is basically just burnt water and we're playing a water burn deck so yeah uh, anyway, so this is our opening hand. Uh, we were playing against a Generate variant. Uh, I didn't actually get a good look at this guy's deck, so I am curious. Uh, is this just a... Uh, uh, yeah, this is almost pure Generate. Wow, okay. Uh, pretty neat. Uh, pretty neat. I think True King Generate is probably the best way to play it, but hey, this is cool too. Uh, so yeah, we're going to go ahead and get right into the replay, and we are going... Well, our opponent's going first, I think, guess. But uh, yeah, he has that thing to special summon. He's just making generates. Set the uh, World Legacy Monstrosity as well as the Heavy Slump. Uh, I guess because he thought he would be making me draw a ton of cards, but uh, not the case. But yeah, now it's our turn. So we are going to go ahead and normal summon our Spellbreaker. Uh, activating Spellbreaker's ability to... Drop the Dew Dark, stop spells, uh, so he can keep his World Legacy Monstrosity. He's going to go and activate it. Uh, definitely should have activated Aquarium Stage here first. That was a misplay on my end. But uh, yeah, so he's going to go ahead and get two more level 9 Generates. Uh, we're going to set a couple more because uh, I realized my misplay. And having prior to revive the Spellbreaker after, this is pretty nice. Uh, yeah, so he's gonna go ahead and do some generate things. We get draws. I dig it. Uh, he summons the Mimikurl, which, uh, I didn't know this card existed until I played against this guy, but uh, it's actually... It's actually pretty cool in a Light of Second deck, I think. I might experiment with it, because it's, it's definitely neat. Uh, but yeah, so we're gonna activate the Trap Trick, get double just desserts, because generates make a lot of tokens. So that's a lot of burn damage for us. Uh, so yeah, so our opponent's just going to attack us directly. The, uh, you know, his board is pretty impressive so far, as you can tell. Uh, so now we go ahead and activate the Aquarium Stage. Normal summon our Defender. Special summon Prior. Tribute summon Spellbreaker back. With Spellbreaker's ability, our, his spells are now broken once more. And then we are going to attack over the Mimikurl. Uh, and he cannot attack right now because that generate has more attack points than 1600. And from here, we can just sort of stall and wait for him to build a board for us so we can use our just desserts. Uh, we, could, we could not activate the medallion because uh, our spells are also broken till the next turn, so we had to set that, but that's fine. Uh, he's going to go ahead and activate the Generator Battle. Uh, we draw a Secret Barrel. He gets the Generator Stage, which is fine. Uh, so he special summons the bot, the uh, Meryl. He gets a couple draws. Uh, going to set to the Generator Battle as well as the Territory. So the Territory is actually a unique card to play around. Uh, it just says that whenever you respond to a Generator card, they can once per turn change it to draw a card. Uh, so it's it's weird, because drawing cards is potentially dangerous, especially with uh, the Utgard on the field. But uh, yeah, so it's our turn. We're going to now... Uh, well, first we draw, and he gets summons and tokens and stuff. Uh, so we are... Just Desserts is pretty tempting here. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and activate it, trying to avoid, uh, you know... Being having to respond to something. Uh, so he does pop our two cards, though, unfortunately. We chain the other Just Desserts. He activates Generator Territory. 
Uh, so we each draw, we get a medallion, which is pretty good. Um, so we burn some, get more, activate medallion to get uh, the, I think we added prior there. Uh, activate our other medallion to get another secret guard. We summon Spellbreaker again. Spellbreaker is going to drop a Dewdark. Uh, he is going to chain up, though, unfortunately for us, uh, to banish it. So we just set the uh, secret barrel, pass it up. Uh, as our opponent's turn now, he's going to draw some as the Draco Net. Goes in for a little damage here, which is fine. Uh, generator battle to get a brand new generator stage uh, in order to draw. He gets the Nidig, uh, makes the True King, obviously. And it's our turn, so he's going to stop our Water Monster effects, as well as get a Summon and some tokens. Uh, the Utgard is back, which is a bit of a problem, because uh, playing through this is going to be pretty difficult. Uh, but yeah, so we're going to activate Secret Barrel to burn him, activate Medallion, uh, going to summon Defender, and then here I thought we would be able to set up sort of a new lock. Uh, with Prior, because now we control another Ice Barrier monster, so Defender's Effect is online. Uh, and the tokens would leave during the end of his next turn, and if it's just Draco Net, we can take a hit from Draco Net. Uh, but yeah, we go ahead and set our Trap Trick, and there's our opponent's turn, but he's just going to use Generator things to banish our Prior, which is unfortunate for us, so we're going to go ahead and activate the Trap Trick to get a Secret Barrel. Uh, we are Losing here pretty much, but we are at least burning him some more. And uh, yeah, but that did not die well. And that was pretty much the best replay I could get with this. Uh, but I think you all can sort of see what the deck is trying to do. Uh, it's a lot of stall, uh, decent burn, and that's basically what the plan is. You just slow your opponent down enough that you can burn them. But uh, yeah, so that was the best game I could get with this. Now let's let me show you guys a uh, well, a pretty average game. Uh, I think it's a little bit of a break, but it does just sort of show the deck struggling to do certain things. I'll see you guys there. All right, going to the final replay of Tomas O nine one zero. Uh, he's playing Salomon Great. We are playing. The, still playing Ice Burn, and we're going first. And uh, you, generally speaking, uh, having a Strategist as well as a Prior in the same hand is really good, especially if you have one of your Protection cards. Uh, the issue is, I would have liked one less Protection card and one more, like, Burn card, if that makes sense. But uh, yeah, so we are going first here. Uh, so we normal summon strategist, use strategist effect to drop and draw the uh, defender, summon prior, prior's effect to summon uh, our defender from the grave, set the secret barrel, and pass. And that is unfortunately all we can do, and just hope he has nothing that uh, will be able to remove our monsters by other way. Uh, he is going to go ahead and try to cosmic cyclone, so we will be forced to activate the secret barrel. Uh, so we do get about 1,200 points of burn, and then he's going to go ahead and do Salomon Great plays. Uh, he had the gazelle in hand, luckily for him. Uh, so now he's just going to combo out uh, the regular Salomon Great combo. I think he was supposed to make Wolf earlier, but uh, yeah, so he's going to go ahead and bounce our defender, Leave our strategist, unfortunately, wide open. Uh, he will just build a little bit more of a board. Uh, reincarnation links for the Heat Leo. Gets the roar. Uh, sets it. Heat Leo is going to go ahead and power up the Foxy. And then he's going to go ahead and do some attacks against us. And um, we're taking the big damage here. For sure. Uh, he's going to make the Abyss Dweller in main phase 2. So we cannot activate the Graveyard, which is... Pretty unfortunate, because uh, we could have done some shenanigans with Prior, but uh, not happening. Uh, so we are going to activate Medallion of the Ice Barrier to get a Prior. We summon Defender, Special Summon Prior, Abyss Dweller keeps us from doing anything in the Graveyard. 
at this point, I was just hoping that uh, he would misread. Uh, that was my plan here. He misreads my cards, or doesn't read them, even. Uh, that would be good, too. But, uh, yeah, no, that is not the case, unfortunately. So, uh, there's our opponent's turn. He is going to just uh, summon and attack per game. And uh, that's usually the problem with this deck. Uh, as you can see, as you can see, without uh, our spell breaker, we definitely struggled a little bit. Like we could set up a decent-ish battle lock, but that's kind of all the deck can do on its own. And against any other forms of removal, that becomes a problem. So uh, yeah. Uh, that's the deck. Um, I don't know. I'm just not a huge fan of Burn. I am definitely curious to see what Ice Barriers could potentially do. Because I do think this deck isn't... Well, it's not awful, I guess. Uh, despite what memes will tell you. And uh, I don't know. I think it... I think it's definitely worth some experimentation, because I feel like there's a competent way to play this deck. But you know what? Let me know what you guys think is a competent way to play this deck. Uh, do you think Burn was the way to go? Should I have done something else? Should I have just stuck with Ice Barrier Frogs, uh, as unoriginal as that is? But, uh, <clears throat> yeah. All that being said, uh, like if you liked, comment via SNJ, and subscribe if you want some more. This has been Ronan, signing off.